Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here with some some writing from Peter Schwartz, um, a great intellectual, I thought, a uh, great objectivist, I thought, but uh, apparently suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. Let's look at what he's posted, and we don't have to read the whole thing or don't have to analyze the whole thing, uh, but in the spirit of letting him spread his word to all of my viewers who are objectivists, I do want to pass this on. And in the spirit of whatever, discussion or free speech or something like that, I'm going to discuss the whole thing, if, if not in detail, then at least in passing. So let's begin. The presidential election. The Democratic Party is moving radically leftwards. Now, I've removed a bit there when you see the three periods there and there. I've removed a sentence or two. There are watershed moments in a culture when a massive political transformation occurs almost overnight. I think we are living in one of those moments. We are past incrementalism and lurching closer to full-blown collectivism. True, true, true. Which is all the more reason to vote against Donald Trump in the coming election. What? What? So, that's insane, right? It's like, how are you going to justify that? Let's see. The Democrats have a certain political philosophy. In our two-party system, restraining them requires a Republican party of opposing ideas. Such a party no longer exists. Trump has taken over the Republican party and stripped it of all vestiges of ideology. Now, if you ask me, the Republican party had been stripped of all vestiges of ideology long ago. They were not ideologues. They were utterly pragmatists. And when people were discussing things like taxes, they said, well, how much should we raise them? Maybe, you know, we, maybe we should lower them. Maybe we should raise them instead of being in favor of lowering taxes. I don't think the Republican Party had any ideology left. And when 16 of the best Republicans that could be found across the nation stood up on stage with Trump, Trump beat every single one of them hands down. Now, I think that shows that the Republican Party is dead and gone, and Trump said that he would run, if he did not get the, the nomination for the Republican Party, he would run as an independent. So he didn't really care. He said, I'll run as a Republican because you're the people that should be voting for me, because I want America to be great again, and that's the Republican Party. They want freedom. But... Why, should, why do I have to? Yeah, go check out Leonard Peikoff. Um, you said that if a country had laissez-faire, it should not control immigration. What if New Zealand with a population of etc.? Go check that out. Um, okay. Yeah, the Republican Party's dead and gone. Now, the Democrats have a certain political philosophy, he says. I don't know if you're paying attention, Mr. Schwartz. The Democrats have changed, and you said so up here. We are, we are past incrementalism, lurching closer towards full-blown uh, collectivism. Who is we? Is that not the Democrats? And is there anybody who's, who's against that? Now, he's basically saying, no, Trump's not against it. So, let us continue. Um, this is a big assumption he has right here. In our two-party system, restraining them, the Democrats, requires a Republican Party with opposing ideas. Now, that's kind of insane, Peter Schwartz, to say that we need to have the Democrats and a party of opposing ideas. That's just absolutely insane. What does that even mean? What, what we need is a party of correct ideas. We do not need to have a party that opposes the Democrats. That's, that's insane. And if the Democrats are that bad that we need a party just to oppose them, then not voting for Trump is insane. So this is insane. This is Trump derangement syndrome. syndrome. Classic, classic case of Marxism covered over by a veneer of of Ayn Rand's philosophy. Okay, the Republican Party had been deteriorating for many years, but prior to Trump, 
it still retains, retains some semblance of an ideology. Really? What was that? Was that George Bush Jr. or George Bush Sr. that exemplified that so well? Now, maybe Reagan, right? Maybe Ronald Reagan, but that's the best you could do. And what was Ronald Reagan's ideology? Okay, now what's Trump's ideology? He is a pragmatist. Trump is a businessman. Trump is a, an American businessman who knows through his sense of life what good and bad are. Okay, he is not a philosopher king, he is not an ideologue, he is not an intellectual. He is a redneck from New York City. That's what Trump is. Uh, now, you can say that the Republicans had an ideology before Trump, but I don't think so. I don't think that you can make a case for that. I think that they were just pragmatic leftists who did not want to stop Social Security, they don't want to roll back government power, they don't want to prevent massive spending, they don't want to dismantle the enormous military machine. No, they, they love it all. By the way, I'm in favor of an enormous military machine, which we could afford more easily if we could get rid of all the other crap, Social Security and so on. Okay, so let's continue. In contrast to the left, the right... Republicans stood for smaller government. Now, is that not what Trump does? Trump wants smaller government. Now, I know that they're shoving it down his throat the opposite way, right? Um, the COVID shutdown, which is a total hoax, um, Trump, Trump does, does not want bigger government, right? They're shoving bigger government down his throat. He has done, you remember he said he was going to do away with two regulations for every new one passed. Well, he did away with 16 regulations for every new one passed. And he's done it in a hilarious, very aggressive way. For example, um, he's being sued by various states, including Wyoming. If you can imagine Wyoming suing President Trump's administration for shutting down the EPA. The EPA was monitoring gas and oil well production, and making sure people didn't produce too much, uh, you know, offshoot methane or whatever coming from the wellhead. Wells had to be tight and clean and everything. He shut all that down. Now you just go drill your well and the, the feds leave you alone. And Wyoming is not happy, and neither are a lot of other states, including places like Colorado and, and uh, Nevada, and they are suing Trump for rolling back regulation and shutting down uh, huge swaths of the government. Um, there was a guy who got, he got, I think he got put in jail and he got fined hundreds of thousands of dollars for building a small retaining pond on his ranch. And he was put in charge of the, F, of the EPA by Trump. So that's really the wolf is, is in the sheep's no, what is it? The fox is in the hen house. Trump put the fox in the hen house. Trump stands for smaller government. I don't know what the right was doing. Maybe they thought they stood for smaller government, but I don't know what they were doing under Bush Sr. and Bush Jr. Do you know? Reagan was beautiful, but the Bushes were absolute garbage. So, um... Yeah, this is not a strong case that, oh, pining for the days of the Republican Party before Trump. It was a wreck, and that's why Trump took it over. That's why he was able to stand there with the 16 best Republicans they could get, and Trump won. Now, he says that the Republicans endorsed relatively free trade. Do you remember the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA? Which was not a free trade agreement at all. It was just a huge, huge list of... Um, of agreements of we'll buy this and we'll let you buy that. It wasn't free trade. Free trade is when you take the government out of it, not when you have government bean counters sit there and list how many TVs we're going to buy and what size, which is what it was. So, no, the, I don't think the Republicans endorsed free trade, not even going back to Reagan. Now, I'm also upset with the ableftivists like Peter Schwartz because they endorse free trade with slave states like China. And what good does it do us to build up China 
about as much good as to build Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany and fascist Italy and Imperial Japan and Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda, right? We built and paid for all of those countries and then turned around and fought them. Go look in the 1930s at how much money poured into Germany from Britain and New York City. We invested massively. And how much did we build in Soviet Russia in the 1930s? We built their huge steel plants and uh, hydroelectric dams were built by Americans. Damn cat. For gold stolen from the Russian people by the Russian government. We built those places, then we turned around and fought them. So the, the Republicans do not have a good, uh, a good history of free trade before Trump. Like it all ended with Trump. Holy crap, are you kidding me? Bush Sr. and Bush Jr. were great, huh? It welcomed immigrants as productive individuals. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody's ever been real happy with unchecked illegal immigration. But yeah, it's true, uh, and we still do welcome legal immigrate immigrants. Legal immigration is fantastic. It brings the best and the brightest from all around the world here. And as long as they are people who are willing to go through the legal channels and be vetted and properly follow the law, um, Republicans are definitely and always have been in favor of immigration. Maybe not massive, unchecked, huge numbers, but that's a danger to our society. So why would we be in favor of that? Who should be? Open borders is insanity. It's suicide. Um, Germany had to open its borders to the U.S. government. How did that go? The Native Americans had open borders. How did that go? Ayn Rand was not in favor of open borders. Of course, she said that two countries should have open borders. Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany. Their borders should be opened by us and we should march in. Go ahead and read her stuff, and you will find that if you read all of her stuff, that she said that anybody can invade Germany or Soviet Russia, Note that they have no right to enforce their borders. Those were the countries she believed had no right to enforce their borders. All right, continuing. The Republican Party wanted fewer controls over business. Now, isn't that what Trump wants? Isn't that what he's doing? Uh, one thing that he did was he took away the rule that said for every unit of uh, low-density housing you build in the suburbs, you have to build one or two or a half or a quarter units of high density. And so you got these suburbs with occasionally little high-rise apartment buildings popping up. And who lives in those high-rise apartment buildings? Poor people. So they use drugs. Maybe they have a regular income, right? But they, they spend it on drugs, so they do not live as well. They don't have money for a house. And here in the middle of all these houses, you've got an apartment building full of drug users and poor people. And why would you do that? Unless you want to ruin the nice suburbs, the nice, peaceful, low-crime suburbs. And that's exactly what they want to do. So Trump did away with that rule. Um... Yeah, as far as I can see, Trump is trying to have fewer controls over business. For example, instead of a huge amount of, of government paperwork and nonsense with drug prices, Trump just says, no, we'll just give ourselves favored nation status. Now, I'm against that. I think that's nonsense and it's terrible and we're, it's probably going to ruin a lot of stuff. It's very bad, but it, sh it shows that Trump does not want massive numbers of controls. He wants it to be very simple, and he wants the people to just go about their business the way they want to do it, under the rule of law. Now, like I said, he's not an ideologue, and he's not an intellectual. He's, he's definitely guided by his sense of life. But I'd like the red, redneck New York City sense of life to be in charge of this country more than Harvard or Yale. Okay, the, the Republicans wanted less government involvement in medicine. Yeah, I think Trump wants that. He said he was going to do away with the Obama care and did away with part of it, did away with the mandate. And, I mean, it's just, it's a mess. And Americans do not want him to get rid of socialized medicine. So until Americans can catch up with what's going on, the government's not going to advocate a date either. So I can't blame Trump. And, and, you know, he's not an intellectual. 
He probably thinks we should have some form of spending for the very poorest. He, I, I hope he doesn't think that, but he probably does. Okay, even as the Republican Party lacked much intellectual ammunition, it had a pro-American sense of life, one that rested on the premise that this is a country founded on the value of individual liberty. Okay, I think that we could say Trump lacks intellectual ammunition, but he has a pro-American sense of life, and his sense of life rests on the premise that this country was founded on individual liberty. Okay, I think that that could be said of Trump. If you don't agree, I think you have Trump derangement syndrome. What does it stand for now under Trump? Mindless xenophobic nationalism. Peter Schwartz, I am going to bite my tongue so I don't say really rude things about you right now. That is so dumb. That is like straight out of CNN. Are you serious? Mindless xenophobic nationalism. First of all, what's wrong with nationalism? America is a great nation. And how mindless is Trump to want to protect our borders and stop Islam and stop socialism? And what is xenophobic? He's afraid of, of other countries? Really? He's the one who's traveling to and meeting other countries. And we're going to get to that. He's not happy about that either. So he says Trump is xenophobic. And then down here, he's, he says it's terrible that Trump says that he would meet with... Uh, with he praises Vladimir Putin. He would meet with Kim Jong-un, leader of North Korea. And he's xenophobic. Make up your mind. These people with Trump derangement syndrome are sick in the head. Sick in the head. Now, at political rallies, Trump elicit, elicits passionate responses from the people he refers to as my followers, not when he calls for reducing the federal budget or cutting back welfare state, but when he declares he will build the wall. All right, Peter Schwartz, you want to ask, why do people cheer so loudly when Trump says we're going to build a wall? And it's because the left is so dead set against it, and they hate the idea so bad, and they're willing to do anything to stop it. Anything. And why? Well, that's another question. But that's why people cheer so loud about the wall thing. All right? So don't, you can't connect build a wall to xenophobic, mindless xenophobic nationalism. There's no connection. The, the left has to have open borders or they can't get their demographic switch that they need to stay in office. So they cannot have a wall built. And so that's why the right wants to build a wall, and that's why they're happy about it when Trump talks about it. Now, he's cheered when he tells the crowd that he'll make America great again. He's not cheered by promoting capitalism, but by expanding the power of the state and keeping foreigners and foreign goods out of the country. Now, I just want to mention, for those of you who aren't aware, that the federal government was funded by a 5% tariff on foreign goods right up until the 1890s, early 1900s. Okay? That was the entire funding, that and land sales. So, if you wanted to buy a clock, you could buy it in a tax-free zone. Do you understand what I'm saying? The United States of America was a tax free zone. You only paid taxes to the federal government if you bought stuff from overseas. You want a piano? Buy it from New York. Oh, you really have to have a German piano? Really? So the guy in New York's not going to get to sell you his pianos. All of that money that you are spending on the piano is going to go to Germany. Well, the government's going to take some off the top then. You don't like it? Buy a piano from a New Yorker. Or, uh, you know, Chicagoan. So, if you, want, if you want something, buy it in the United States of America, and you can get it tax-free without paying the federal government any tax. You, you want to buy something outside of our borders? Then you have to pay taxes. Now, you say it's not fair. What if they don't make that inside the border? Well, then you have to pay a tax. But let's say you were going to buy a piano, and they just don't make the type of piano you want. Uh, so you're going to have to buy it from Germany. But it's too much because of the tariff. 
Well, now you're going to have to buy something else inside the border of the United States. So it keeps money inside the borders. It employs people inside our borders. It introduces some inefficiencies, right? But we can minimize those inefficiencies with a low tariff, say 5%, maybe 10%. So what is this about foreigners and foreign goods, keeping them out of the Trump, out of the account, that, and expanding the power of the state? He's trying to reduce the power of the state. Trump is all about reducing the power of the state. So this is just classic Trump derangement syndrome. These are the views that now define the party. Trump has co-opted the Republican Party. True, the Republican Party was dead on arrival, and Trump took it over. That's true. What's the shape of the new party? I don't know, but let, we'll see. We're going to have to see. Okay. And Trump's influence is such that Republican politicians who fail to embrace him are unable to gain the party's support. That's just further evidence that the Republican Party is dead. Nobody's interested in what old school Republicans have to say. Nothing that they have to say is interesting to people who are perfectly willing to legalize marijuana but want privatization in the schools. They want the government out of our business, including drugs. So these old school Republicans who thought that they would just ride the fence of morality, religious morality, people have left religion. People don't care about religion anymore. In a place like South Dakota, 45% of people register as non-affiliated to any religion. 55% are affiliated to some religion. In South Dakota, people have walked away from religion. Christianity does not inform us anymore. So we have a whole generation of people who just do not care about the fence-sitting Republican Party. All right? Okay, continuing. Consequently, the better Republicans have withdrawn from politics or been driven out by Trump. Really? Really? There were better Republicans? I didn't know there were any Republicans worth a good goddamn. If you ask me, I don't think there were. But he says, the ones who remain, many, the, the ones who remain, many of whom once provided intellectual opposition to Trump, are now his lapdogs. Yeah, there were some who fought him, and now they're, they've fallen into place, and I don't think Trump's ever going to let them forget that they fought him just like with Kim Jong-un, North Korea. All right, we're going to have to continue. Let this be video number one. We'll have to do part two.